So, Geniclass is designed uh, to take advantage of all the information technology capabilities of uh, the, the 20th, late 20th century, 21st century. Uh, we have, uh, in the older submarine class designs, sonar was a separate space, a sound check. Right. Uh, but here we brought sonar into the room. They repre that represents the, the port side of the uh, control room here, and the combat systems on the starboard side, the starboard side of the control room. But it's all shared information. It's all about uh, optimizing information flow, building situational awareness, and providing information to the decision maker, whether it's the off the deck or uh, or the ca or myself in an approach attack or uh, you know or just submerged operations scenario. So it's a fusion of information that comes right here because now sonar data can be shared from the port side of the control room over to the starboard side of the control room. They're all right here where they can talk and they can see what's going on. They can hear what's going on. And uh, you know, so you can take advantage of all that information flow. Well. The, uh, these are all, again, as we talked about before, these are all server-based systems. It's all fiber optic networks. Uh, there's about, uh, about 1.5 or 2 terabytes worth of, worth of processing, I think, on the starboard side, on just the port side of the control room alone. Mm -hmm. A little bit more than that, sir. Am I off by? You're off by hundreds. Okay. <laughs> hundreds of terabytes. Hundreds of terabytes, all right. Uh, you know, it, so the network processing, I mean, this is really supercomputing uh, kind, of, kind of stuff. Right. So from sonar, way, the way sonar works, sonar, when we're talking passively, it, we're talking about we're listening and we're listening in a direction. So what you're looking at is basically the sphere here. Uh, and it, all it is is sound. And you see it's water falling down, it's water falling down the display is what we call it. Right. So coming down the top to the bottom, it looks like a waterfall. But in that, if you have a contact, you'll see a discrete set of noise, an enhancement in white, like perhaps this. You know, this is just showing you what's in, in the river, and this is this is actually looking forward here. Uh, and so, it couldn't tell you exactly what it's looking at, but right. uh, but it's just looking at, at noise. But that enhancement could be a contact, and that so that would mean something to us. And as it moved left or right, that would tell us information. Based on that, using our fire control algorithm set, you know, most of those displays have some classified information on them. Sure. So I can't uh, can't display that. Even though a couple of these displays have a secret banner on them, but uh, yeah, I'll tell you, there, there's nothing that are on any of these displays that's classified. Okay. Or they wouldn't be up. Some of the fire control displays have always have some bit of classified information. Sure. I can't have most of those up. But from that, we take that that sound, that direction. And from, the, from that, as that sound moves from left to right or right to left, as we move through the water and the contact moves through the water, we have a submarine or a surface ship, if we're down underwater, we take that and we start to analyze that data as it comes in. And then as we maneuver and change how the, that relative motion is moving, how, the, how we're moving relative to the target, we start to collapse the uncertainty. It's an iterative math problem as we eliminate variables, knowing only one, only one, only one part of the equation, which is what direction he's, he is, we take that and, and collapse that into a determination of the contact's range, his course, and his speed. And, just, and we can use that information to collect information on what he's doing if, the, if our tasking is to go follow a submarine, or we can use that information to, to, if our tasking is to sink the submarine, it's a wartime scenario, to be able to uh, put a torpedo on that uh, contact, put on that submarine. So it, it's a you know, vast capability, a lot of network processing, a lot of enhancements to help us pull that sound out of the background and identify what he's doing to be able to analyze that sound and figure out to use that to identify the contact as well as uh, you know, what he's doing, how fast he's going, what, uh, what are the particulars about that, about that ship. So not only can we tell you that it's a surface ship, we can tell you how many blades is, uh, he has on his propeller, whether he's got a ding in his propeller because of the kind of noise he's making, whether he has a diesel engine or a gas turbine, uh, whether he's uh, working a winch on his deck because we might hear the banging of chains, or things of, things of that nature. So we can listen and we can use that, that information. And things like Hunt for October, you hear Jonesy with this headphones on. Well, we still do that. That is still part of uh, the Soderman's uh, business, mm -hmm. is to be able to listen and orally pick up clues and cues as far as what the contact's doing. But it's really a lot more of you know, using the system in order to be able to analyze 
the sound and break it around. We're using the process to break down that noise to extract information that tells us what the contact's doing. 